Hey guys, Scott Schmickdahl here. I'm gonna show you how you can actually load out, track what you're loading, shoot to a target, and then recall that data later. So I'm gonna basically shoot for 12 tons. I'll show you how to use a target in this case, but I'm gonna move uh, 12 tons of pea gravel, not gravel, so I wanna change my material ID. I'm also gonna throw in a target of, oh, let's do 10 tons today, okay? So you can see I've got a 10 ton target. I like to use this and just load up until my hauling unit says, but some people like to see this count down to zero. So I'll show you how that works. Go ahead and get a load here. Now this first pass, guys, I'm not too concerned about what it is, because I know I'm gonna need at least two passes to complete this job. So I'm gonna just gonna work as aggressively as possible, safely, but aggressively, get this material over to my target, and on my way, notice I'm carrying nice and low, but on my way and my approach, I'm gonna start lifting up through the way range and give a nice, smooth, steady lift. And as I do that, you can see, I might get some estimated weights, but I will certainly get that green box weight after I pass through that precision weigh range. In this case, it's showing 6.2, and as I dump that material, you can see I've got my uh, tip-off mode engaged, so I'm getting some adjustments, but I don't want it to adjust anymore. I wanna make sure this locks in, so I'm looking for those asterisks on that bucket. I'll dump until I at least get my asterisks, make sure my bucket's empty. Got my asterisks, I'm gonna back away, go get my second bucket load. Now I'm kind of explaining what's going on here, guys. So uh, doing a little, working a little bit slower than you may have to, um, but uh, I'm just trying to give a good example of how to use this skate. So here we are, I'm on my second pass. Yeah, I'm gonna overshoot on purpose. You're saying, yeah, sure you are, Smitty. So in this case, I'm gonna run up my RPMs, just so I take that hydraulic spikes out of the system, give a smooth, steady lift. You can see if I carry this 6.4 tons over, it'll be too much, because I only wanted 10 tons. So I'm gonna go ahead, back out of the pile, so I make sure I don't rest that bucket on the pile. I'm gonna start tipping, and as I tip, you'll see this uh, if, uh, material meters off, and as it lowers here, it's gonna be less delivered material as well. So I can just basically tip to my target, and as this comes down, you can see my target remaining keeps lowering as well. So I'm trying to drive this down to zero. I'm trying to drive this to my target of 10. And I'm almost there. I wanna basically just, just come just shy of it because as I rack the, uh, dump that bucket out, that load gets a little further and that physically um, measures differently. We do a good job of accounting using that road, uh, tilt sensor on that bucket but uh, we don't have a pressure sensor in that tilt circuit. So uh, you've got a little bit of adjustment there, some estimated weights you're dealing with, but I think you, know, I think you can uh, do a good job of compensating for that. And as you then adjusted that bucket down there, on your final approach to your target, guess what you're doing? You're passing through that precision weigh range again, and you're getting a good world-class uh, estimate right on that final bucket load. In this case, our target was 10, we're right there, guys. So I'm satisfied if you are. I'm gonna go ahead and tip that material right on the bucket. It is metering. Remember, if I'm at my target, I want that to lock in because I don't wanna make any more adjustments to that. So I'm looking for those asterisks. There they are, I'm done. Back right on away and uh, get this uh, job completed. So what does completion mean? I could either clear all this data, subtract off my last pass and then hit zero, hit that equal zero button to to clear it all out, but this is good data. I want to store it, so I'm going to hit my store switch. When I do that, you can see that whole display resets right back to zero. I'm ready for my next job, but furthermore, that data is now in my totals menu on my display, and if you go to your home screen, the totals menu, under material, you can actually see that, that uh, accumulate here. So we just stored some additional pea gravel, and I had, had some loads on there before, I hadn't reset it because I'm working all day here. I want to basically find out what those current totals are and that's where you would do that. You could also go into productivity.cat.com and Vision Link and see some of those totals as well. So now that you've been working with your wheel loader, uh, you can actually not only uh, retrieve that data on board as we showed you, but uh, you can also come into either Vision Link and see some of your lifetime totals, daily totals, 
But you could also come into productivity.cat.com if you've got an advanced productivity subscription. And uh, in this case, you can see I've got a dashboard set up. I've called it Operator Challenge, and I've identified my equipment group, which in this case just includes my 962 demo unit. I selected a date range. Uh, in this case, I selected the 25th through the 26th. And uh, I've got some widgets set up down here below. And you can see I've got uh, several different widgets. One of them happens to be called Material Summary. If you wanted to add additional widgets, you just come right here to this Add Widget uh, location. And there's several uh, widgets you can choose from. Uh, but in this case, you can see our Material Summary widget shows um, the uh, trucks that we've loaded as well as the material types that went into those. In this case, I was always just loading the same truck. We weren't, we weren't selecting trucks. We were just utilizing the material IDs. And so you can see some gravel that we loaded, some pea gravel, and some unknown material. Some of these other widgets, you can kind of play with those and see what serves you best. But uh, there is this daily run, and you can see what that machine's been doing throughout the day. Um, but also, uh, you've got your uh, application totals, so different segments. But also you can see from an application map standpoint, if you select on these different uh, uh, criteria, where those items happen to occur. You can see I've got my dump selected here and it shows where those dump, location, uh, dump activities uh, occurred on that machine. If you wanted richer data beyond that, or if you wanted a separate Excel file, you could actually download that Excel file. Um, it comes in the, in the format of a CSV and I, previously pulled that down for us. You can see the example that we showed you on the video um, is split out right here. And uh, you can see that there was uh, two passes done uh, on that truck. And uh, the first pass was 6.2 tons. The second pass was 3.7 tons done at this time. So basically two passes for a total of 9.9 .9 tons of pea gravel.